Okay, today's lesson on heat and temperature is on expansion and contraction. So expansion and contraction. So basically, as materials warm up, like we've talked about before, the particles are going to start moving faster and they're going to start spreading apart. So therefore, substance will expand, meaning increasing in volume as their temperature rises. A material will cool down particles. No. Materials, um, if they cool down, therefore the particles are also slowly slowing down. So substance, sub substances will contract meaning they will decrease in volume as temperature decreases. Okay, we're just going to look at the three states of matter. So in a solid state, materials keep their shape and size. Um, solids, like ice, they have a definite shape and volume, and they cannot be compressed into a smaller space. Liquid states, um, the materials have a definite size or volume, but they don't have a fixed shape. Liquids will settle down to the bottom of the container and take that shape of the container. And liquids cannot be compressed. The gas state, um, no definite shape or volume. They expand to fill all parts of the container and they can be compressed into a smaller space. Okay, uh, keep in mind though, many gases cannot be seen. Um, another form is plasma. So, you're already familiar with the three states of matter that we talked about, solid, liquid, gas. The fourth state of matter is called plasma. And to change a material into a plasma, extremely high temperatures are required, like inside the sun, which is millions of degrees Celsius. So in plasma, um, individual particles that make up the material, they start to break apart into electrons and ions. Um, so plasmas, they can be produced on Earth, but only under extreme conditions. Matter on Earth exists as a solid, liquid, or gas almost all of the time. All right, let's watch a quick video on um, plasma and the other states of matter. Uh, this here is an activity in the textbook uh, called Expansion and Contraction of Solids. So... Are there similarities in how substances expand when heated? Are there similarities in how they behave when cooled? So basically what you're doing in this activity is you'll be looking at um, these materials here. So we have lead, steel, aluminum, brass, copper, glass, and pyrex. And we have the length at minus 100 degrees Celsius, it's in centimeters, then the length at zero degrees Celsius, and then the length at 100 degrees Celsius. All right, so we're kind of looking at um, similarities that we see when the materials react, like as they get warmer, um, and what do you observe um, in this chart um, with those materials. All right, expansion and contraction of solids. So when thermal energy of a solid increases, so does its volume, therefore causing it to expand. So when thermal energy of a solid decreases, its volume will also decrease, the solid will contract. Um, this is critical for people that work as engineers, designing bridges and buildings, um, steel beams, for example, they'll bend or even break if the designs and plans don't allow for the expansion and contraction. Um, sometimes um, expansion joints are used. These were invented to deal with expansion and contraction. They're used on bridges, highways, and between railroad tracks. Um, here we have um, these metal joints. So this is showing on a uh, road. So when temperatures are low, the spaces between the metal joints will be large, but then when temperatures rise, the spaces between the metal joints will close up. Um, here as well, um, we have uh, workers installing a gas pipeline, and here they also have to take into consideration um, expansion and contraction of the materials that they are using um, for this gas pipeline. All right, just some more examples here. Um, the first one is the concrete is cracking here after a cold winter. 
Um, so a large area of concrete is poured as a single slab to create a new outdoor basketball court for your school. Uh, the work was done in August before the school year starts. Then there's a very cold winter. When spring comes, you and your friends want to use the court and you notice there's several large cracks in the concrete. It looks like the concrete will need replacing. So what do you guys think happened? Uh, the next example is fitting the nut to the bolt. So you're working on your bike. It's hot summer afternoon and you need to replace a metal bolt. You find that it fits inside a metal nut. But then you leave most of your tools on the bike sitting in the sun and you take a break for an hour. When you come back, you pick up the bolt and find that it's hot to the touch. You grab the right size of the metal nut that's been sitting in the shade. It doesn't fit. But then you use an identical nut that had been sitting in the sun and that one does fit. So what do you guys think happened there? Okay, last one. After getting caught in a summer thunderstorm, you decide to make yourself a mug of hot chocolate. The biggest mugs are in your kitchen freezer, which were chilled and ready for making lemonade on the next hot day. You take one, noticing that the thick glass is covered with a light layer of frost, and as you pour the boiling water into the mug, you hear and see it crack. Uh, what do you guys think happened there? So next we're looking at expansion and contraction in gases. Most gases are colorless, therefore they're difficult to observe. Gases, they don't have a fixed shape or size. They're going to take the shape and size of their container. Now, if you put gases in a flexible container, such as a balloon, you can see that they expand and contract much more than solids do when the temperature changes. For example, warming helium from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius increases its volume by about one third. And particles and gases, they're far apart and they're moving fast and freely. So if we look here, um, we have a balloon that's not filled with any air and um, it's on this flask here. And then we light it up down here, warming it up. So the particle model is gonna predict that warming the air will cause the particles to move faster and spread farther apart. So when the air in this flask is warmed, the air expands and it does fill up the balloon. Um, you, will, you may have also seen this um, with balloons. Um, they are filled up when it's, when, when it's warm, like inside the house. And as you go outside, they wilt. And then when you bring them back in the house um, and warm up, they expand again. So that's another example showing expansion and contraction in gases. And next is um, in liquids. Um, so expansion and contraction in liquids. So when thermal energy is added to liquids, they usually expand more than solids do but not as much as gases do. Um, so we can see this, for example, in a thermometer. Um, the liquid, which is usually alcohol, it used to be mercury, but now it's mostly alcohol that's used. Um, so that liquid, it's inside the narrow glass tube. As the liquid becomes warmer, it expands and it will rise in the glass tube. And as it cools, contraction will take place and the liquid drops down. Okay, so that's an example um, in thermometers. All right, let's see here, just using our understanding of thermal energy, heat and expansion contraction to answer the following questions. Um, so let's go through this, just pause it. 